The BBC has uncovered evidence that dozens of women were potentially groomed into online sex work by the influencer Andrew Tate's all-male society, The War Room. The documentary team has spoken to whistleblowers and alleged victims. They were given exclusive access to 12,000 pages of encrypted messages which reveal the instructions given to War Room members to make women gradually submit to their control. Uh, with me in the studio, Matt Shea, the reporter, and the director, Jamie Tarson. Um, right, there's a, there's a lot to get into here. So you've, you've investigated, um, Matt, this all-male society. What did you discover? So most people know Andrew Tate for his online content, which has been called misogynistic. But what most people don't know is that he also runs this secretive old male society, The War Room, which he says is a kind of self-help society that helps you become a better man. Uh, it costs £6,000 a year to join. What we uncovered is that actually within The War Room, they're actually teaching men methods for grooming women into online sex work. And we've identified from the leaked messages you referred to at least 45 potential victims of this grooming method. Now, it's important to remember that not all war members will engage in these methods, but the evidence we've seen suggests that many did. Okay, so y you have a whistleblower um, who we hear from in this documentary, Eli, who points the finger at the man he thinks is driving the project. His name is Miles Sonkin. He's known on the chat logs as Iggy uh, Semmelweis. Uh, let's have a listen to what he said uh, about the way that it worked. Iggy, he basically said, let's not kid ourselves. This is a cult. Who's in charge of the war room? Iggy's at the top, yeah. J Jamie, is, is, the, the, is there any evidence? I mean, Matt just uh, sort of touched on it. Is there any evidence that the men who belong to this war room followed through on what they were being taught? Yeah, so in the leaked messages that we got access to, we were able to see that up to 45 women were recruited into working on webcam, potentially groomed using this method without their knowledge. Um, we saw specific examples of men grooming specific women and in the documentary we spoke to two of those women, one in Buenos Aires, Argentina and one on the west coast of the US who both alleged that they personally were groomed by senior members of Andrew Tate's war room. So we do see in those messages senior members of the war room giving advice and men seemingly acting on that advice ending up with women working for them in the online sex industry. I think we can hear from, from one of the alleged victims. Um, she's called Amanda, that's not her real name, but let's have a listen to what she told you. You know, I was uh, 21 um, and, you know, I wasn't making any money. I was young and in a very vulnerable position. I didn't feel like I myself had a lot to offer, so this, like, older guy kind of being into me it was attractive. Up until that first mention of webcam, he had portrayed himself as someone who was romantically interested in you? Absolutely, yeah. So, um, Matt, we, we see you in that video. What, what can you tell us about Amanda's story? Is there any more to it that would give us some clues as to how this worked? Yes, so what's so striking about the one we're referring to as Amanda and the other one we interview is even though they live thousands of miles apart, they were both approached in the same way, they say. Uh, they were both approached by a man who portrayed themselves as romantically interested in them, who said they wanted to be their boyfriend. It was only after a long period of a relationship that they eventually realized that, according to them, this man was grooming them to work in, in the sex online sex work. So industry. before you'd interviewed them, they'd never actually spoken to one another. They'd, they'd never been able to... Uh, sort of swap stories? Or... No, no. And, and so you can imagine what it was like for them um, thinking they were in this relationship that so they got a bit stranger, a bit more controlling uh, and then eventually, you know, when the conversation was had with these women by their alleged groomer to work in online webcam sex performing, you know, uh, by that time it was sort of too late. They were already engaged in a relationship with this person. Can you talk to us about the process of that? I mean, how, how does a, a grooming process like that evolve? Yeah, so there are some different aspects of the method that we see being taught within the war room. Um, one part of it comes from this course that Andrew Tate himself teaches called the PhD, which is ostensibly his course for how to sort of make sure a woman is under your control and you're the person with the ultimate amount of power in the relationship. But what we found through whistleblowers, through the women we spoke to and those leaked war room messages is that the method being taught is a lot more sophisticated and detailed than is seen in just those public courses which you can find. Um, Iggy Semmelweis, a senior war room member who you referred to, he talks about missions or creating chase cycles. So basically 
gradually giving women more and more menial tasks that get more and more severe as you go and in their own words rewarding them for good behavior and punishing them for bad behavior. Iggy Semmelweis refers to this as Pavlovian conditioning and how you would train dogs. So there seems to be this idea that through a gradual process of grooming you can make someone become more, become more submissive and subservient. But Iggy also in messages talks about it being important to sort of minimize a woman's support structure. So getting them to leave their family home, leave their town, leave the country even that they might have grown up in, ceasing friendships with old friends and work colleagues. So it's this sort of combined method of creating subservience and dependence while also isolating them from their potential support. To, to the extent that they would tattoo the, the name of their groomer on their, on their bodies. Yeah, we saw that was commonly requested by numerous war room members and many of them sort of bragged in the chat room messages posting pictures of women with their names tattooed or wrote all over their bodies. And this is something that Andrew Tate himself has encouraged in his own videos. He says that, you know, getting a woman to fall in love with you is just the first 10 percent, getting a woman to tattoo your body tattoo your name on their body is the other 90 percent so you can see how far that level of control goes or what they're trying to achieve anyway what about their control over the war room and who they attracted to it and how they sought out potential members that's one other interesting thing we uncover in the film we speak to uh, a man who uh, claims to have been the head of sales and marketing for the war room and he talks about you know dozens of people working in marketing for andrew tate to share clips of him, to discredit people like us who are reporting on him. So, you know, if you go on social media and you see lots of people saying that, you know, our reporting is, is all lies or discrediting everything we're saying, to some degree those people are being orchestrated from within the war room as part of a marketing campaign. Did you approach Andrew Tate for this documentary, Jamie, and how, how much contact have you had from him? Yeah, I mean, we approached him numerous times. I mean, I think Matt can speak to this, like, you approached him, he offered us an interview on one occasion, we even went to his house in Romania. The, the, the I think we've got that, I tell you what, let's, let's play that clip because we, we've got the clip of when you call him. Let's just have a listen to it and then we'll talk off the back. Well, if it isn't Matt. Andrew, hey. Mr. Honest Journalism. Yeah, that's what I, that's how I like to think of myself. I mean, look, the, the main reason I'm calling is I want to see whether you were up for doing another interview. You do an interview with me. You might have for a little bit, but I can do an interview with anyone. So why would I do an interview with you? Because we have a history and there are still unanswered questions that I want to put to you. All these reporters who want to say bad things about me, I get to choose which reporter on the planet gets to become relevant via proxy because I am the most relevant person. Mr. Honest Journalism. <laughs> that is how I like to think of myself. Yeah. Um, uh, what about the, the people he associates with? Do they, do they troll you? Do they come after you? Yeah, so this is, again, one of the orchestrated campaigns run from within the war. And they refer to me as the DNG, which stands for Dork Nerd Geek. And I just think that that's you know, their method of attacking people who are uncovering allegations that could damage them. OK. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's uh, a really interesting uh, documentary. I mean, I mean, just just tell us for uh, one one last thought that does occur to me. I mean, people will watch this. It's it's more publicity ab about him, and there is, of course, this court case going on in in Romania. Are, are you at all concerned, Jamie, that you that that you're giving him too much? That that he's hearing from victims their side of of, of events, and and that might benefit him in any future trial. I think an important thing to remember with Andrew Tate is that he managed to become an incredibly famous global figure without media coverage. It was his platform on social media that allowed him to become so vocal and popular. And even now he's attracting millions and millions of views just on Twitter, just on Rumble. So from my view, what you need to do as a responsible journalist is provide the context and the truth of allegations around it and not just allow this figure to use social media to create the narrative himself. Well, it's extraordinary work, boys. Um, Jamie Tarson, Matt Shea, thank you very much for coming in to tell us all about it. And if you want to watch that, it's called Andrew Tate, The Man Who Groomed the World. It is on uh, BBC iPlayer. Thoroughly recommend a watch of that.